Seeing as I love watching the Olympics and I'm basically obsessed with these carnivorous plants, I thought there might have been a way to combine them together where we can learn something new and have a bit of fun while doing so. So what better way is there than competing our plants against each other to see who can eat the most garden pests? Now, although these plants do eat flies, some of them can eat wasps and even spiders. But how well can they handle these slimy boys? Snails and slugs. These are so gross. Are they gonna kill this plant? Now this is a pitcher plant. Well, their government name is actually Saracenia, but pitcher plant is easier. Anyway, they have this sweet nectar all around the lid and body of these traps, and you'll soon see that this is how they attract and catch all the flies and wasps that they eat. However, this nectar isn't just sweet. It's also addictive and toxic to most bugs that eat it, because it has something called conine inside of it, which kind of makes bugs drunk. So while they crawl around this plant trying to get more nectar, they eventually crawl underneath this lid, and because they're a bit tipsy, they slip and fall down this tube. Now the tube itself has slippery walls and downward pointing hairs, kind of like a python's teeth. Yet, I don't think this will really do anything to a slug, seeing as they have the slime. However, there's only one way to find out. Oh, shit. Slugs and snails aren't things these plants usually eat, so we are going to have to feed them ourselves. However, they could get caught naturally, as I know from experience, that they will visit your plants at night and eat them. Let's just hope that it doesn't happen this time. Right? Now, I'm going to feed all the plants and give them about half an hour to see if the pest escapes. But tomorrow, we will go through each plant and see if they have kept their meal or let it escape overnight before they can keep their points. And of course, each bug they keep counts as one point. Now at first, I thought the slug was going to leave this trap almost as soon as I put him in. But halfway out, he stopped and turned around. Now I'm not too sure why he did this, but I think he either thought it was a good spot to hide until it went dark, or he could tell there were dead bugs below him and when to eat them, seeing as slugs do eat basically anything. However, this is also when the wasp attacked. I was minding my own business setting up the camera when I started to hear this buzz. Anytime a bug gets caught in a pitcher plant, they buzz their wings trying to fly out. So each and every bug has a different sound, and this is the sound of a wasp. Now I don't know what exactly happened here. Maybe the wasp had been caught earlier and it woke up when the plant fell over, or maybe it got caught while I was setting up my camera. Either way, it isn't happy, and the only thing keeping me safe right now is the plant. I'm getting ready to run. However, the plant does have a trick that I haven't told you about yet. You see, aside from the slippery walls and recurved hairs, the unique shape of pitcher plants means that when a bug tries to fly inside of it, the air actually forms a vacuum and sucks the bug down deeper. So not only is this wasp slipping on the walls, she's also dealing with those hairs and the vacuum that she's making with her own wings. Now wasps do get caught pretty often by these plants and most of them usually escape by eating a hole in the side of the pitcher and crawling out. However, I'm just glad this one wasn't a able to get out because she is super angry and you know that she will attack me. Yet after 30 minutes, the wasp still hadn't escaped, which was great for me, but also made me curious about the next pest, a spider. Now spiders are good for your garden. They can even control pests like flies and mosquitoes, but our garden is literally covered with spiders, so to us, they are a pest, especially if you're allergic to them. However, the thing about spiders is that they generally do live with pitcher plants, and lynx spiders even live inside the pitchers and steal the plant's food. 
So along with the slug, I really think this spider will eventually find its way out, but maybe only when it feels safe enough, seeing as this fly is going crazy down there. Yet, there's still one more pest that I'm sure will find its way out, seeing as it also has the slime. A snail. Now I don't know what game this snail was playing, but it hasn't moved at all, and I know for a fact that they will crawl around after like 5 minutes of leaving them alone, so seeing as he's playing dead or something, this makes me wonder if he has some kind of plan to get back at me, like eating this plant overnight or something. Yet, the fact that snails have these huge shells is a cheat code because it makes it impossible for the other plants to even try and catch them. Take a Venus flytrap for example. They got their name because they can eat small bugs, like flies, but when it comes to snails, they don't stand a chance. It doesn't even matter if it goes body first or shell first, they're just too big and strong. Now, this is usually the same for the other pest that has the slime. However, this isn't happening to us just yet. These slimy boys usually slither into a trap, get caught, and then use their slime and strength to squeeze out of the plant. Yet, for some reason, just like the one from earlier, this slug isn't moving. It's probably waiting for the right time to leave, but we won't know for sure until we check up on these plants tomorrow. Now feeding the rest of these bugs to this flytrap was as easy as you can imagine dealing with a wasp and a spider could be. The wasp was still sleepy, but when she wakes up, she could bite or push her way out of the trap to escape overnight, just like they can do with the pitcher plants. Yet, as for the spider, seeing as they make up 30% of a flytrap's diet, I don't think it has much of a chance of escaping. However, this is when the flytrap made the biggest mistake of this mini Olympics. You see, flytraps have adapted very interesting ways of catching food. Not only do they have this tasty nectar that flies can't resist, but they also have these long teeth to hold flies in their mouth. However, this flytrap closed a fraction of a second too slow, which gave this fly just enough time to squeeze through the only gap in its teeth and fly off to safety. This is crazy to see, as flytraps are meant to catch flies. But hey, no one is perfect, not even the plants. Especially not the sundews. Well, that's not entirely true. They might look perfect, but they can't really catch the same pests as the other plants. I mean, sure, they are very common in collections, which is why they're in this mini Olympics. And if you're talking about mosquitoes, moths, midges, fruit flies, gnats, all of those small bugs, then these guys would absolutely dominate this competition. But when it comes to big pests like a slug or a snail, they simply aren't strong enough to deal with them, especially when they leave all of that slime. However, things start to change when they meet these smaller pests like a wasp. You see, bugs usually struggle to get free from these plants because of the sticky droplets at the end of their tentacles. However, little do they know that their struggling causes the plant to curl more of their tentacles around the bug. Why are you so strong? And those sticky droplets? Well, they also have enzymes inside of them that digest the bug alive. Now seeing as wasps are a bit smaller than the slimy boys, they can get caught. Chill out, chill. But that doesn't mean they won't put up a fight. That's because I gave it honey. Getting this wasp onto the plant was difficult enough, but after just one minute, the wasp started attacking the plant. She's gonna get free, watch her. Look, she's biting it. She's biting the plant. Wasps, vicious. Oh yeah, I'll show you, yeah. Let's sting it now. Look, look at her. She's trying to sting it with a bum. That's the thing about wasps. They'll get out. Although it didn't look like it with the Venus flytrap. This one's ready to go. Look, she's still having at it. Okay, I need to get out of here. I need to get out of here before she gets me. She's free. She's free. Can we all agree on that? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch her before she flies off and gets me. She got free, guys. Okay. Oh. I don't like wasps.
Now after the most stressful event of the mini Olympics, eating with a missile on wings meant that the eight-legged predator was a walk in the park. Now just like the wasp, a spider is simply too strong for a sanju. And unless it's one of those scraggly daddy long legs, a spider won't really get caught by a sanju. However, seeing as this specific mini Olympics seems to only have pests that a sanju can't deal with, we need to give her something that's more to her standard. Something she can show off how truly amazing she really is. Something like a fly. Now at first, it doesn't make much sense as to why these plants are so scary. But after half an hour, you can see exactly what makes these plants so deadly for smaller bugs. When the rolling sticky leaves grab a hold of your wing, there's absolutely nothing you can do except watch the acid-covered droplets slowly move towards you. Now this is probably my favorite event from this mini Olympics, but it still isn't over. And although the Sanju was able to hold onto this fly overnight, not all the plants will be able to keep their food. You see, the Venus flytrap started off strong yesterday by catching that spider and somehow holding onto that wasp overnight. I think this wasp was maybe a bit sleepy or something because they usually love to attack anything they can, but when it comes to the slug, he's not there. It's gone. I couldn't believe it. I even checked this trap three times just in case I was being blind or something, but it's definitely not there anymore. And you can clearly see the slime that it left behind in this trap. However, this is not the worst escape of the mini Olympics. Aside from the pitcher plants holding onto that wasp and fly, which isn't really that surprising, it also managed to hold onto that spider that I was sure would escape. Yet, when it comes to the slimy boys, we have some casualties. Not only did the slug get out of the trap, it also left behind a trail of slime, proving that it is now somewhere in the greenhouse eating our plants. And if you thought that was bad, the snail made its way out at night and ate the lid of this pitcher plant. This isn't fatal for the plant, but this specific pitcher will die off sooner than the others, seeing as it now has holes in it. And although the pitcher plant has won this mini Olympics, it isn't the best way of controlling pests in your garden. Sure, they can catch a lot of bugs naturally, especially the pitcher plants, but it might be better to get some sticky traps if you have a really bad infestation, as that's probably cheaper than buying tons of these plants. However, if you've watched this far into the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like and maybe share this video with someone who loves plants. You have no idea how much that truly helps this channel out, especially because it's free. Yet, if you've ever wondered if Venus flytraps could learn things, click on the video on screen. I'll see you there.